Hello and welcome to the session in which we'll examine the statement of cash flow for private not-for-profit entities. What do we know about private not-for-profit entities? We already looked at the statement of financial position. We already looked at what else? The statement of activities. And we learned that private not-for-profit, they follow FASB, the Financial Accounting Standard Board. It means they follow accrual accounting. It means they follow normal accounting, regular accounting, business accounting, for-profit accounting. What does that mean for us? If it's statement of cash flows, it means we're going to follow the same exact concept when it comes to the statement of cash flows. Preparing the statement of cash flows under the three categories for business, for profit business, which are operating, investing, and financing. One, two, three. In this session, I will not prepare a statement of cash flows from scratch because the assumption here if you're taking not-for-profit accounting you already know basic accounting if you forgot your basic accounting go to Farhat lectures in my financial accounting and learn how to prepare statement of cash flows or go to my intermediate accounting in this session I'm gonna go over the categories that they could be a little bit different than the four business activities that deals with statement of cash flows let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. As I mentioned, there are three sections, operating, investing, and financing. Briefly, I'm going to go over what, what each section would include, just to gonna give you an idea what to look for when you are looking at these. For example, operating activities. What goes under operating activities? Well, operating the not-for-profit. How do you operate the not-for-profit? Usually donors. Donors will give you money. And if that money is not restricted, it's to operate the business. Also, you might have to pay for employees. Well, that's operating activity. It's an outflow. You might have to pay interest on your debt. That's operating. Although it's a debt, that remember, debt is a form of a financing, but the interest is operating. Cash activities associated with any suppliers. You're paying your suppliers. You're paying your rent to operate the business. If you receive refund from suppliers, that's also operating activities. It just, it's an inflow of cash. If you make charitable contribution or disbursement, that's operating the charity, that's operating activities. Um, if you are, uh, if you suit someone and you receive a settlement, that's operating activities. Uh, if you sold financial asset and those financial assets are not restricted, in other words, you know, somebody gave you financial asset and you're selling them, that's operating activities. So that's what usually goes under operating activities. Beside the changes in the account, as you can see, as you can see on the uh, uh, on the financial statement, changes in receivable inventory, just like when you prepare a statement of cash flows. Let's move from operating to investing. Well, think about investing. What goes under investing activities when it comes to for-profit businesses? Well, we're dealing with fixed asset, property, plant, and equipment. You might buy them, which is an outflow of cash, or you might sell fixed asset. It's an inflow of cash. So buying and selling fixed asset or property, plant, and equipment, those are what type of activities investing. Also, buying investments, purchasing investments, bond, stocks, that's investments. Selling those investments, sale of investments is also investments. Also proceeds, if you sold the uh, works of art, well, that's investing. Proceeds from the sale of assets that you received in prior period and whose sale proceeds are restricted to, to investment and activities. So maybe you received something in the financing activities and they told you now you could use it to buy property, plant, and equipment. Once you buy them, that's a investing activity. Now, what goes under financing, which is the third category? Financing is when you're borrowing money. You remember, for not-for-profit, we don't have investors, so we don't have common stock. But if you borrow money, 
and if you repay that debt, that's form of financing. Now, what what else would be could be considered a form of financing for a not for profit? Think when someone makes a an endowment, a permanent endowment. It means a restricted contribution, and the contribution itself you cannot touch. So someone tells you, I'm gonna I'm gonna donate ten million dollars either in cash or in stocks or whatever reason, but you cannot touch this money. You could only use the proceeds from this money. For example, proceeds means if you deposit this money in the bank, it might earn interest. If you if you invest it in the stocks, you might receive dividend. So the proceeds or the earnings from this money can be used for some other purpose. That's a form of financing the business. Think of those as shareholders, but they're not really shareholders. They are donors, but what they do is they restrict the donations. So receipts from contribution restricted. It could, this could be restricted for the purpose of uh, maybe buying physical assets like fixed asset or the construction of a new building. Well, that's financing until you release them. It goes from financing to investing. This is basically what goes under these categories, basically under investing, financing, and investing, financing, and operating the business. You, know, you just want to have a good idea what goes where. Also, what you need to know is we could, you, we could use the direct method or the indirect method when it comes to how to prepare this. So we could use the indirect or the direct method. If we use the direct method, we don't have to prepare a reconciliation, which is in contrast to for-profit accounting, where we have to complete a reconciliation if we, use, if we use the direct method. Now let's take a look at few transactions. They may appear in a form of a multiple choice. They might appear in a form of a CPA simulation or simply put an exercise in college. So we're going to look at an activity or transaction and we're going to determine under which category it goes under the cash flow statement. Funds received without donor restriction. What do we assume? If we received any funds and those funds are not restricted, it means we're going to use them to operate the charity. So it goes under operating activities. Receipts and income from long-term restricted asset. Remember those permanent endowment, those are restricted asset. Any money we generate from there, that's a form of financing. They go under financing activities. Funds received from a lawsuit settlement. Well, if we suit someone, well, that's part of operating the charity, operating activities. Proceeds from the sale of gifted asset. Somebody gave us a gift, we sold it, and we received the proceeds. We're assuming there are no activities and no restriction. It's operating activities. We purchased real estate or equipment via restricted funds. Yes, the restricted funds initially were financing, but now we, 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 we're using them to buy an asset. Then it is investing. Gifts of goods or services instead of cash. So somebody gifted goods or, or services, but they did not gift cash. Those are non cash investing and financing which is the same as which is the same as for profit for profit they have non cash investing and financing activities somebody contributed goods or services but they are not cash non cash let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com each of the statements provided below relate to the cash flow statement of a non governmental not for profit organization except one so we have four four statements and one of them is wrong so look for the correct ones and eliminate them first cash flow statement might be prepared using the direct or the indirect is this correct yes you could use the direct or the indirect and if you use the direct you don't have to reconcile to the in indirect so that statement we could eliminate it because it's correct the statement of cash flows include three main sections: operating financing and investing that is correct we could eliminate this choice the statement of cash flow includes four sections. Well, I can tell you, it's, it's we already know it's three. Now you might be saying, that's easy. I know it's four sections, but you have to be very careful because when, with, when it comes to enterprise fund, which is governmental accounting enterprise fund, they do have four sections. So that's why you have to be careful about enterprise fund cash flow statement, which is a required cash flow statement and private not for profit. So. So what does that mean? It means this is incorrect. Governmental, non-governmental, not for profit, don't have four sections. It has three sections just like for profit. The fourth section is for the enterprise fund. 
Now, obviously, let's just double check number D to make sure it's correct, which is incorrect. A contribution, a contribution received and restricted for the purchase of property, plant, and equipment is a finance activity. That is correct. If somebody gave us a contribution and they restricted this contribution for the purchase of PP&E, it's form of financing. Now, once we actually buy, use the money and buy the asset, it will be investing for that period. What should you do now? So let's eliminate D because it is correct. You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you whether you're preparing for your CPA exam. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. Stay safe.